Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Whatever time you're watching this episode of Say How You Feel, Custom T-Shirt TV, I want you to know that we're thinking about you and hope you're thinking about us and we're thinking about each other. So that being said, stay tuned. And after this intro, we will definitely tell you what we're talking about today. We're back, we're back, we're back yet again. So we're back again, and today we're talking about heat press or screen press. Which one works for you? Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the ongoing uh, uh, debate. I had someone hit me up the other day and asked me, uh, well, we're still kind of having a conversation. So when it was yesterday, they put, I can't remember. We, we're in two different time zones. They're back home in California. I'm here in Tennessee. And the question was, How do I make T-shirts? So I sent two videos. And one video was a video of me screen printing on my four-color screen press. And the other video was uh, me printing on a screen heat press. And the statement they sent back was, the heat press seemed easier. Well, so my response to that was, it depends. You have to understand that everything has a process. Uh, In theory, heat presses are easier, depending upon which, what you're doing and what type of design you're doing. Uh, Theoretically, they're easier. Here's here's what I said. So let's let's first let's break down what a heat press is. And con and, and it's a basic rare form. It is a iron that can that has the ability to go up to four or five hundred degrees, whatever it goes up to, and can create large amounts of pressure that causes the design uh, let me see. Okay, so it causes class all transfers. Uh, vinyl. If you can tell me what this is, leave it in a comment, and I might make you a shirt. I'll give you a gift. But this design <laughs> into a uh, an garment. Okay, so the shirt that I have on, it was done with traditional screen press, but cured with a heat press. So before the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how to use them intangible, well, in, in, in tangent with each other, and we'll go from there. So, first thing, heat press, you, they, they, they go as small as 9 by 12. I think some people have seen them, had them smaller, I don't know. I, I have a 9 by 12 over here, I barely use it. I use it for little kids' clothes. I have two 16 by 20s, I have a 15 by... 15, I've had, I had another 15 by 15, but it went out, so I got rid of it. Uh, I don't suggest people getting less than a 16 by 20, in my personal opinion, only because it's easier to go up. Well, you can do smaller designs on the 16 by 20 versus doing, it's harder to do a larger design on 15 by 15. Now, don't get me wrong, a 15 by 15, you got to think in, in, in retrospect what that means, in, 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 in reality what that means. Okay, so you're going 15 across, which most designs are never going to be 15 across. Then you're going uh, 15 down. Very rare when you have a design that goes that low. I've had designs that go that low. I have a design that goes 13 by 19. Uh, I've done designs that goes 13 by 20. So it just depends on what you're doing. Now, here's the catch with all of that. So the heat, 16 by 20 heat press can handle 
either one of those. But like I have to do it one of the, the first design I sent you, I think I have to do one of those today for a customer and send it to them uh tomorrow. So that being said, that is a twelve by twelve design. It can work on a fifteen by fifteen, it can work on a sixteen by twenty. If you're not doing extremely large designs, there's no need in you getting sixteen by twenty through that. If you don't have a lot of space, there's no need in you doing getting a sixteen by twenty. But here's the catch. If you have the space and you don't and you want to be able to do larger designs, why buy two heat presses? Get one heat press, get what you need, call it a day. That's a heat press. Now, for a heat press to be effective, you need a printer, a vinyl cutter, or you need to order transfers. That's it. So you don't have to, you order transfers. You don't need to make any designs. I'm gonna do another video on that, all of that, breaking all that stuff down later. But you don't need to have. That's all you gotta do. You know, you can buy your designs already ready to press, or you can print them out on an inkjet printer, sublimation printer, or you can cut them out in vinyl. Whatever works for you to get your designs to either this point, you can get GTF printer, you can get, and I wouldn't run with that answer. I've said two different things to say what that that, that design could be. You can get the vinyl cutter, or you can order plastic salt transfers, sublimation transfers, whatever transfer it is that you want. And this is just a one color transfer. Whatever transfer you want, you need. Uh, let me see. This is a sublimation transfer. No, it's not a sublimation transfer. It is a transfer, but it's not a sublimation transfer. Uh, This is a submission transfer. Yeah, you ain't got to like the design, but it is what it is. I, yeah. Uh, so you can get, you can get it, you know, you can order those transfers, buy those transfers, make those transfers, whatever it is that you want to do, and use them on your heat press, right? Uh, you can get, uh, DTF transfers. You know what I'm saying? So, there are a number of ways that you can do uh, uh, to create, to use the heat press. Now, uh, as you can see, I do it all. Now, you can have a four-color screen print press. Now, I showed you I have screen print transfers, but I also have a four-color press. That's what this was done with. Matter of fact, that press did these shirts, did this shirt. Any shirt you see with this design on it was done with that press. And it was cured with my heat press. M not that one that I use all the time in my video, but the other one. You might have seen it in my, when I'm in my T-shirt room. I used to have it in there, but now I don't really use it. I keep it as a backup just in case. Um, so here's the catch. This, now with the screen printing press, you need ink. You need a way to uh, cure your screen. To make your screen, which means you need to have emulsion, you need a uh, exposing unit, or you need to find somebody who can make your screen for you, which I'll talk about in another video. Uh, you need a flash dryer or a convey and a and or a conveyor dryer. Uh, some people use heat guns. I I don't use heat guns. I have a flash dryer. Um, you need a printer to print your film out in. You need, and, and you need squeegees. You need a, uh, if you're going to make your own screens, you need, it's a lot of things. And I have a whole other video. I'm going to go into that. Uh, but basically what it does is you take the screen, you put an image over it, on it, and you put some emotion on it, burn the image in it. And then what happens is the image washes out and everything around it is hard and so ink won't flow through the thing do everything else but everywhere where the image is washed out is where the ink is going to go through so and, and basically you're making a stencil in so many words that's what you're making is a stencil you put it on your press put your t-shirt your garment whatever it is that you're printing on there 
and you squeeze it and you press it on there. So that's that's the basic nut it's in the nutshell what a screen press is. The cost difference. Cost difference with a screen press versus a heat press. A heat press uh will run you you can get a basic setup to start making t shirts for Uh, I can say you can probably do it for five hundred dollars. I'll be honest with you. Uh, let's see, three, say one fifty. So wait, hold up, two fifty plus one fifty. That's four hundred. Get your basic fifty dollar printer. That's four fifty. Get you some transfers and ink. Yeah, you can probably do it for five hundred and have. If you just need equipment, if you're talking flat out equipment, the cutter, the heat press, and the heat and the inkjet printer, you can do that for five hundred dollars without an issue, and be able to take orders, and be able to make some money. Flat, flat out, hands down, I can show a person how to do that. You want me to do everything that I do, but you can do everything that I do. Uh, simply because you can order transfers, DTF transfers, you can order screen printing transfers, you can order uh, uh, the different types of transfers. Every transfer I have on here, the vinyl transfers, you'll be able to cut yourself. Inkjet transfers, you can do yourself. Uh, so there are some transfers you can literally do yourself. So uh, 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 the thing that you would look, need to look at is uh, how much footprint you got, how much real estate you got to work with, and what it is that you are wanting to do. How many colors your designs are. Uh, what makes sense? Because nothing, the it, it's not a really extensive learning curve other than the vinyl cutter, learning what will cut with your vinyl cutter, how detailed you can get, and things like that. So now with a screen print set up, you're looking upwards to ballpark figure. I think I can get a personal screen print set up for a thousand dollars. Right at about a thousand dollars, I can get your screen print set up. You're limited. Uh, let's see. If you order your screens, so to say, fifty the, the press set up basic inks. Uh, you can buy a kit for about five hundred bucks. Uh, you don't really have to have the exposure unit because you can pay somebody minimum thirty five to fifty dollars a screen. And if you already have a heat press, or if you don't have a heat press, you can get a fifteen by fifteen for under two hundred dollars off Amazon. You necessarily don't need the flash dryer or the conveyor dryer if you have the uh heat press so the kit which will come with the ink a couple of squeegees a screen which would uh you can order screens from people 45 so really under a thousand dollars i can get you set up with either way the thing about it is and here's the catch the learning curve if you're not making the learning curve in screen printing really to tell you the truth is more so the uh making the screens and applying the right amount of pressure, which is easy to figure out the angles, the hand position and things like that. Then, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's a big learning curve, depending on what you're doing. They have companies that, like I said, it's a company in Tennessee that I use a lot that can do, and I have an exposure unit, but I may not feel like being bothered. It's simpler for me just to send you this design and let you make the screen and just pay you 50 bucks to go pick it up. You see what I'm saying? Matter of fact, you already got the screens. You got everything. All I literally have to do is go pick it up. And then I'm ready to screen, you know, because I'm going to do my designs. I'm going to put my, my registration marks, all that stuff. They're going to give me the film when I go pick it up. And I'm going to set everything up on my press. Boom, I'm ready to go. So in theory, you're really the, the, the ideal of, it's a lot of big learning curve. It's not factual because 
if I can set up and line up my shirt on my heat press, I can set up and line up my shirt on my screen printing, screen press. Only difference is not putting too much ink on it, being really careful when I take it off my heat press, my screen, my uh, screen press, and put it on my heat press to cure it. Put it on 320 on my heat press, press it for, three, for 30 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that. I can't remember been so long since I've done it, but like 20 seconds. I, you can even get away with doing it for about a, you know, 50 seconds and be fine. But you, you press it for like 30 seconds, you know, take it off, it smoke a little bit, and it's ready to roll. This shirt, as I said, this shirt is a few years old. I wear it often, and it ain't came off, and that's exactly how I did it with my screen press and my heat press. I had it sit. I did a lot. I did, matter of fact, my wife had a birthday, and she did a sale, and I had a screen made. I tucked on the heat press. I didn't even bother using the flash dryer. I just tucked on the heat press, printed it because of black ink on light color shirts. Boom, printed it. And uh, sometimes I would, depending on what I was doing, I would use the flash dryer and the heat press, and I would flash it right quick, take it off, press it, cure it, send it on its way. So... Here's 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 the whole thing. So the cost difference is a few hundred dollars. Let's be honest. The now the learning curve, I've already told you, is really simple. The learning curve, you gotta learn how to use the the uh, uh, exposing unit, how long it takes to expose your, your emulsion takes to expose if you're doing your screens. If you're not doing your screens, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have to learn how to. Do registration if you're doing multiple colors. Now, if you're doing multiple colors, I don't do more than maybe two or three colors anyway. Let's just be honest. I might do two colors, three or more. I'm probably going to order a full color transfer because it's more, it's it's just easier and more uh, makes more sense because I could do a DTF transfer. Or you know, I can do a digital transfer, which is basically what a DTF transfer is, and do it uh, in a way I can order enough transfers that make sense. So if someone is getting, or say somebody's getting, uh, 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 they only want 10 shirts, so I'm not going to order DTF transfers. You might have to take an inkjet transfer if you're on a cotton shirt. It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It would be great. I'm going to get you in there, knock it out. Boom, I'm done. I no longer subscribe to trying to create opportunity things that are not there. If it's not there, it's not there. If you're not getting a lot of shirts, you want 1,500 colors, you're going to have to take it the best way that it's going to make sense for your pockets. And that's just beginning in. So unless you're ordering, you're pre-ordering. Like I suggest a lot of times I suggest people to order pre-order transfers and all they got to do is get the shirts and pay me to do the shirts and all this extra stuff. Yeah, what time to press. So the learning curve, the learning curve on vinyl is just what vinyl works, what's good vinyl, all the, you know, it, you know uh, uh, press time, how long it holds, transfers, things like that, good transfer companies. So the, the learning curve is slightly different for both. Uh, it's quicker for the heat press, I'll be honest, uh, depending on what you're doing. But it can also be quick for the screen printing because you have to learn whether you want to use water-based ink, uh, if you want to use uh, 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 plastol ink, then you have to figure out if, uh, if you, depending on what ink, depends on what emulsion you use. You know, it depends on the design, depends on what emotion you use, what type of screens you have. It's a lot more. I'll tell you what, screen printing, here's the difference between screen printing and plastic and, and heat press. The biggest difference is space and equipment. Equipment can be a mess with screen printing because you have screens, you have inks, you have all of that, and then it's messier. You know, you get ink all over the place. You get ink on shirts. You get ink everywhere. You got to clean all that stuff up. It's harsh chemicals you got to use to clean it up. So it has its drawbacks. Now, the benefits of screen printing is this shirt cost me less than a dime. Uh, let's see. No, yeah. Because I got this shirt from a partner of mine who sells shirts. And it was, uh, I think it was, I paid less than 50 cents for the shirt. 
So when you combine the shirt and the screen printing ink, I probably paid uh what twenty about sixty cent for the shirt complete. You know what I'm saying? So it had just benefits because if you can get the shirts really, really cheap, or if you can get the shirts at normal cost and you have to do fifty shirts, then getting uh, 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 getting screen printing them is better. Now they have options. You can screen print with your heat press and don't have to have a screen press at all because you can get what's called a screen printer transfer, which I'm going to talk about in another video. But you definitely can do that option and that option will make it so that you get screen printed quality without having the screen printing press. Now when I talk about screen printer transfers, I'm going to have on a shirt that I screen printed maybe I did a screen printer transfer on maybe seven, eight years ago. So I want you to look at the wear and tear on it and understand that's what happens after, you know, a few years. But it's a few years old. Who cares? You know what I mean? If you apply your transfer on right, it will last you for a very long time. I'll just be honest with you. Will it break down? Yes. At some point, everything breaks. I don't care what it is. Anybody tells you, oh, it's never going to break down, you're lying to yourself. The shirt will break down at some point. Let's just be honest. You dig what I'm saying? It's going to lose its elasticity. You break down, so why wouldn't your garments break down? Let's be honest about the situation. You do not have the same elasticity in your skin at 16 that you're going to have at 50. That's why people wrinkle and skin gets drooping and all that other stuff because your body's gotten older, so is that garment. So it is what it is. It doesn't matter how good the design look and the shirt look like crap. So let's just make it make sense. So uh, uh, now the last question is simple. Which is best for you? And you have to answer that. Which is best for you is depends on what your pockets are looking like, your space is looking like, and how much work you really want to do. Again, I hardly ever use, I'll be totally transparent. I rarely use my screen printing, trans, uh, my screen press. Because it's really no need for me to do it unless I have an ex I'm doing a sale and I have an extremely large amount of orders. If I have 10, 20, 50 orders, maybe so, because I'm going to get more bang for my buck to press it myself. And then it's less mess because I have less paper trail. Because these transfers are one use transfers. So when I press it, after it's done, it's done. There is nothing, unless it's like this and it's a sublimation transfer, you might be able to sneak off and get two two hits off of it. I've done it. Uh, I didn't put a video up for it, but I might do it again and just so you guys can see. So, again, the best thing, best option for you is the one that works for you, the one that you would benefit the most from. The heat transfer, uh, uh, the heat press, or the screen press. You have to decide. So when it's all said and done, please like, share, and subscribe. And when, it's, when you finish with the rest of your day, and you can, leave a comment and keep saying how you feel. Peace.